So I was reading this article from Troy Hunt about when accounts are hacked due to poor passwords, victims must share the blame. This was due to credential stuffing and people using the same password across multiple sites. Let me just explain what credential stuffing is. So credential stuffing is the automated injection of breached username or password pairs in order to fraudulently gain access to users' accounts. This is a subset of a brute force attack category. Large numbers of spilled credentials are automatically entered into websites until they are potentially matched with an existing account, which the attacker can then hijack for their own purposes. Credential stuffing is a new form of attack to accomplish accounts takeover through automated web injection. Credential stuffing is related to the breaches of databases. Credential stuffing is an emerging threat. So successful logins are usually about 0.1 to 0.2 of total login attempts, allowing the attacker to take over the account matching the stolen credentials. So it's actually quite a low rate and would therefore require many, many attempts to actually yield some sort of success. The attacker drains stolen accounts of stored value, credit card numbers, and other personally identifiable information. So if you're ever sat there thinking, I'm a nobody, what could anyone possibly want with my information? Well, there you go, you do actually have some information relevant. You will likely have a bank account, maybe have a credit card, so that's money that can be stolen, used, or abused, and personally identifiable information could be sold on. So, as much as you may think you're a nobody, you do have a value. <laughs> many data breaches have taken place due to lax security measures on many different websites. One big one was LinkedIn. It's very easy to acquire the information from the LinkedIn database, uh, just looking at a, a certain website, searching for the name of LinkedIn, LinkedIn breach, will find you a RAR file, seven gig, does inflate out quite large. And this particular file has email addresses with unsalted SHA-1 hashes, which are the passwords that people used. An easy way to break all those is with a file like week pass 2, 28 gig, that inflates out to about 80 gig. So that is many different passwords that can be attempted against all the accounts in there. And that will yield something like a 90 odd percent success rate on password cracking. So 90% of the accounts in that LinkedIn breach there, which was, I'm just trying to think now. There we go on Have I Been Pwned, another of Troy Hunt's websites. There were 164 million accounts in the LinkedIn breach. So 164 million email addresses. That's a lot of data there to try. And that was just one of them. Look, we have other large breaches, 711 million in the largest one there. So there's a lot of information floating around the internet, a lot of usernames and password combinations that could be attempted. So where does the blame lie? Well, ultimately, it is the attacker who is carrying out the malicious act. Note I'm calling them the attacker, not a hacker, because this is such a low-level kiddie type attack, script kiddie type attack, pretty much on par with walking around trying people's front doors to see if they're open. There is no sophistication involved in it. So yes, the attacker is the one who is ultimately to blame. They are carrying out the illegal act. But also to blame the company or the website for not detecting and preventing such attacks from happening. How many different accounts could really be logged into from one IP address? Okay, we do have the case of companies, but are there gonna be systematic failed attempts from one IP address like that? Seems pretty unlikely. The only such instance that could really occur is in such a credential stuffing attack. Other companies also to blame for not educating the users properly, allowing users to have really poor passwords, poor predictable passwords. But it does get annoying if you're trying to create a password only to be told you must have one uppercase letter, one explanation mark as well, when your password could be 25 random characters random lowercase or hexadecimal digits, let's say. Pretty unlikely to be hacked. So why all the extra precautions? That just annoys me really. So it's kind of a balancing act there. But then victims should also share the blame. They were the ones who chose a poor password. They're the ones who were predictable in reusing passwords. 
And if anyone was a victim to a credential stuffing attack, they should certainly not say they were hacked. They were, there was no hack involved. It was their poor choices that led to their account being logged into by someone else. Yeah, in fact, Troy Hunt makes that point. Let's stop saying hacked in the news headlines and start saying used a shit password instead. Absolutely. Say it as it is. There needs to be more education involved in this. Troy does seem to really go to great lengths to explain why he would be victim blaming. Which I suppose I can sympathise. One would not normally like to blame the victim when they're... One would not normally like to blame the victim of a crime. (laughs) It's not very nice. I can appreciate that, but it's still their responsibility. And going by from what various websites are saying, Troy has given the examples of Twitter, Amazon, Google, and Discuss, that the responsibility for the account does lie with the account holder. So you are solely responsible for the activity that occurs on your account. You must keep your password you must keep your account password secure. We encourage you to use strong passwords, passwords that use some various combination there. Let's think realistically in a harsh manner that there should only be one password that you should know. The password to your password manager. If you know all the passwords for all the different internet sites you are visiting, then you are doing it wrong. A password that you know is generally going to be a poor password That's where you're opening up yourself to the risk of a credential stuffing attack. So yeah, that is my thoughts on it. Whilst some blame does lie with the users who have chosen poor passwords, blame also lies with the companies that have allowed credential stuffing attacks to happen and to the lack of education that they have given to their users. Oh, and of course, the attacker actually carrying out the credential stuffing attack. So I do hope that has given some insight of why it is important to choose a random and unique password for each website, because by choosing a different password for each website, you are effectively mitigating and avoiding credential stuffing attacks. I do hope that after watching this video and reading the information, that some people will go back and look at their accounts and reconsider perhaps some of the choices they have made. I'm not necessarily going to blame anyone for the choices they have made if it's due to a lack of education. If it's due to laziness, then that's a different matter entirely. But thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.